Hey guys, so in this video, we'll be going through turning points, how to actually find a turning point. So before before starting this, if you don't know how to complete the square, you need to go and watch the previous video because you will not be able to do this. So go and watch the previous video. I'll put that link in the description below. It's basically completing the square, how to solve different types of equations using completing the square. You need to understand how to do this before coming into this one. So make sure you watch that if you don't know. If you have already watched it and you know how to do this, well, this is going to be a bit more straightforward for you. So let's get straight to this. Um, when when so you've got two questions here: finding the coordinates of the turning points, right? So just just for my, just so that you understand what turning point means, uh, you don't need this, but I'm just explaining to you before getting to the question. So these are quadratic graphs, right? And our quadratic graphs normally we have something like this, let's say positive, and then we have something you know sometimes like this, negative quadratic graph, right? Now the way where turning point comes in is essentially if you look at the point here. This is where the graph turns, right? Hence the name turning point, it turns. So this is normally a turning point and a turning point is essentially a coordinate. Now this turning point is a minimum turning point, right? Because if you think about it, this is a minimum coordinate of this graph. And then if you look here, we have also another turning point because the graph is turning, but this time this turning point is a maximum point because obviously this graph has its maximum value at this coordinate. So essentially turning point is, you can look at it as a minimum and maximum value of a quadratic graph. And what we're gonna do here is essentially find the coordinates of these, um, of these points. That's what we're gonna do using completing the square. So if we look at the first one, I'll leave the graph here so you, just for the, so you can see, but if we look at the first one, we have y is equals to x squared minus 5x plus 9 and we want to find a turning point for this right now remember we are not solving for x so we're not finding x is equal to something we're not doing that we're finding the coordinates so what we're going to do is we're going to keep y as the same and we're going to complete the square for this so x squared becomes x i'm going to half 5 which is 5 over 2 whole thing squared carry the plus 9 and then minus 25 over 4 so this is again completing the square if you don't know how to do this watch the previous video i explain everything there so now what we're going to do is going to simplify that. So that's going to be what one. So that's going to be four thirty six. So that's eleven over four. Now the way the turning point works is that you have to ask the question: What value of x do I have to put in here to get this whole bracket to zero? What value of x do I have to put in here to get this bracket of zero? And essentially, it's the opposite of minus five over two. So for me to to get this to zero, it has to be. 5 over 2, because if I put 5 over 2, 5 over 2 minus 5 over 2 is 0, right? So when you're trying to figure out the x value, if you can't do that, just look, find the opposite of minus 5 over 2, which is plus 5 over 2. So then the way I write this is essentially I'm going to have y equals to 5 over 2 minus 5 over 2 squared minus 11 over 4. So obviously that's going to give me 0, and I'm left with minus 11 over 4. So my turning point is when x is 5 over 2, my corresponding y value is 11.04. That is my turning point. Okay, very, very simple, Not nothing hard. If you understand how to complete the square, essentially you're just putting a value of x here to get the bracket to zero, and then the remaining thing is minus 11.04. Now, if we go to the next one, um, we have a number in front of x squared, so we're going to do a bit of the advanced completing the square, right? So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna divide everything by nine. So I'm gonna say nine bracket x squared, if I divide three by nine, so I can write it as three over nine for now, x minus eight over nine, okay? So then I have y equals to nine bracket x squared. Now this three over nine can be simplified to one over three x minus eight over nine. And now we're gonna complete the square. So keeping the nine here, we do not move the nine to the other side, right? So that's gonna be, a, I'm gonna put this bracket, you'll see why. So if we complete the square, x squared becomes x, so I'm gonna put that in a bracket. Half of 1 over 3, if you half 1 over 3, you times the bottom by 2. So that's going to be 1 over 6. Whole thing squared minus 8 over 9 minus the square of 1 over 6, which is 1 over 36, right? So then you have y is equals to 9 bracket. So that's x plus 1 over 6 squared, right? Now, if you put that in your calculator, uh, 8 over, minus 8 over 9 minus 1 over 36, that's going to be 11 over 12. So minus 11 over 12. Okay, so that's how we've got to that stage. And now what we want to do is we want to find an x value. So what x value do I have to put in the bracket again to get this bracket to zero? And the only the only value that can be is minus one over six, the opposite of one over six. So if I put that in, I'm going to have y is equals to nine bracket 
minus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 squared, right? And then minus 11 over 12. So obviously that gives me 0, so I'm left with 9. Bracket, we can put this bracket now, minus 11 over 12. That's what I'm left with. So if we times that, we can simplify by 3, so that's going to give me 3. And then that's going to give me 4, so I'm left with minus 33 over 4. So my turning point is going to be when x is minus 1 over 6, my corresponding y value is minus 33 over 4. That is my turning point. So make notes on this first if you need to. Uh, and what I'll do after is give you guys some questions to try out. Again, if there's anything you don't understand or any method, just put it down in the comments. Like I said, I'm more than happy to help you guys out. Okay, you don't, uh, you don't get if you don't ask. So write this down and pause the video and then I'll give you two other questions for you guys to try out and um, yeah, to do. Okay, try these two questions out, have a go at it and play the video back again to see the work solution. Right, so if we're gonna find the turning point for this, we're going to do y is equals to x squared becomes x, we're halving seven, so you should get seven over two, whole thing squared plus nine, and then minus the square of seven over two, which is 49 over four. So then it's y is equals to x minus seven over two squared, if we put that in the calculator, that's going to give me 436, so oh, what's that, minus 13, minus 13 over 4. My x value in here has to be 7 over 2, the opposite of minus 7 over 2 to get that to 0. So if I put 7 over 2 in there, minus 7 over 2 squared, minus 13 over 4, so that means y is equals to minus 13 over 4. So my turning point should be 7 over 2 and minus 13 over 4. That's what you should have got. Now the next one, we're going to divide everything by 4 here, so we're going to have 4 bracket x squared plus 3 over 4x minus 1 over 4. Now let's complete the square, so y is bracket x plus half 3 over 4, which is 3 over 8, whole thing squared, should put the bigger bracket, minus 1 over 4, minus 3 squared, which is 9, and 8 squared, which is 64. Right, so then we have y is equals to 4 bracket x plus 3 over 8 squared. And then if we put that in the calculator, so that's quarter plus 9 over 64. <clears throat> so that's 25 over 64, so minus 25 over 64. So now my x value has to be minus 3 over 8 to get that to 0. So then I will be left with just 4 times minus 25 over 64. So then y is equal to if we cross, divide that by 4, divide that by 4, which is 16, minus 25 over 16. So my turning point is minus 3 over 8 and minus 25 over 16. That should be it. So if you've got that, well done. That's literally it, right? Completing the square and turning point, that is it. Nothing more, nothing less. If you still don't understand, go back and understand first how completing the square works. And if it's something else, just put it down in the comments. And again, I would really appreciate if this video has helped you out. Give this video a big thumbs up. Share it with your friends, that anyone that struggles with maths, I will be doing more content on this. Until the next time, I'll see you guys on the next one.